Rob Park. Central Avenue. We're all about the Sunshine City. Radio Sunshine. into the doctor's office. The doctor tells him you need an operation. The guy says, I want a second opinion. The doctor says, okay, you're ugly too, but oh boom. Was that funny? No. Okay, and are you ready for the show? Yay, we're ready, Lucy. Please start. And so I started. Uh, I'm Steven Souza with the Tampa Bay Rays. You're listening right here with the Homemade Broadcast. Base vehicle three count operations will start on my mark at five, four, three, two, one. It is the Homemade Broadcast, HMB Radio on Radio, stpete.com. My name is Will Kuntz. I'm the host. That's right. I'm the commander of this ship, as they say. Who says that? I don't know. Nobody really, but it's an old expression. Uh, welcome back. Good to be back with you. Uh, Steven Souza. Oh, my goodness. I'm never going to be able to use that uh, intro anymore, that little introduction. I'm going to have to go harass some other Rays player to... Do a little you're listening to thing for me. You got traded uh, when I'm recording this, which is today. We usually record on Wednesdays and uh, broke today. Steven Souza's out, team MVP for the Rays last year. Headed to Arizona, I think. Arizona's nice. You'll like it out there. It's cool. Um, I mean, not not weather-wise. Uh, am, I, am I right or am I right, guys? Uh, so yeah, he's out to Arizona. It was a three-team trade, I believe, with the Yankees were involved. Ray's got a few prospects. Uh, Order Rizzi went this weekend, too, for the, uh, one of our pitchers. And, uh, Corey Dickerson, I believe that's, yeah, Dickerson got, uh, what do you call that, DFA'd? I don't really know baseball stuff very well. There's a lot of ins and outs with baseball, a lot of terminology to know, lots of, I don't understand how they do their rosters. You got AAA. I mean, I know that's minor leagues and stuff, but there's so many different options you can do. But anyway, fire sale for the Rays. Lots of players gone. Uh, lots of prospects coming in, though. You know, a few of those guys end up panning out and play on the team for 15 years. I don't think anybody's going to be upset. But right now, people are really, really upset. Uh, I, all over Twitter, that's all I see is a bunch of people complaining. Uh, they weren't good, though, with the team that they had currently. So why not? Try something new. That's my motto with it. I mean, you're still going to root for them, right? And they can't do much worse than they've been doing the past few years. So, big deal. You know, of course, those guys become members of the community and everything. It's sad to see them go, but it hardly ever happens where players stick with one team for their whole career, especially in baseball with no salary cap and stuff. A guy has a big year, and all of a sudden they're paying him, you know, 200 million bucks. So, it's, you know, it's hard to say, it's hard to blame those guys for, you know, getting money or getting, especially getting traded too. They don't really have anything to do with that. So I know some of the players have expressed, you know, they're upset about it because it feels like they get a good thing going. Look, I get it. Totally understand. I get why people are upset. However, I'm just saying, you know, let's just let it play out. You know, what's done is done and we will see what happens this year. I, I, I think, uh, I think they're going to surprise some people. Now that's probably the kiss of death since I said that out loud for them. I think they're going to be better than last year, though, even with all these players gone. Longo's gone. I mean, um, I think it would be a good change of pace, though. So how was your week? Good? Great? Mine was okay. Uh, lots, lots of working involved, of course. But I did get some free time on Sunday, and uh, I went back in time. I was transported to another land, uh, a simpler time. The Renaissance, that's right, the Bay Area Renaissance Festival is in town every weekend for like, I don't know, in the next two months or something like that. They must have like a few, it must be a year-long thing that they just travel around 
and uh, go to certain cities and just set up shop for two months or something. But super fun. I used to go when I was a kid, and uh, I remember always having a blast at those things. And this time was really not too much different. I, I had been a couple years ago, and I uh, remember having a good time. This time, you know, it's it's kind of hokey, but it's fun. And uh, especially if you get a few beers in you. Boy, it gets super fun. So uh, we didn't really do anything, just kind of walked around. One of the things that I did notice, however, is that if your tickets aren't cheap, it's like 20 bucks to get in there. But like inside, like food is not super outrageously priced. Um, and like trinkets, if you want to get like a goofy necklace or something, a dragon claw gripping a marble or something like that, pretty reasonable. It's like three bucks. I mean, so if you got kids and stuff, and of course they're going to want that. You know, big deal. You can drop three bucks on that, and if they wear it for a day, you're definitely going to get the uh, opportunity cost is high there. You're going to get uh, something of value that you can hang on to for a few days and wear and get your three bucks out of it. And uh, one of the things I remember, of course, with the Renaissance Fair, turkey legs. Oh, my God. I used to get those all the time. So I couldn't pass that up. I couldn't pass up the opportunity because I haven't had one since I was a little kid. And uh, I decided to get one. And it was good. It's not ideal to be eating uh, a turkey leg, a big old, you know, steroided up leg in the middle of a group of people. You know, it's flu season, and that freaked me out. And you know, but you just got to put it out of your head. Once you have a few beers in you too, it gets easier and easier to do that. Um, so I got this turkey leg, started eating it, and out of the corner of my eye, I see a lady. Um, looks like she listens, uh, looks like a patron of the bone. Let's just put it that way. looks like she has a lower back tattoo and an ankle tattoo and, uh, there are other kids' names. That's all I'm going to say. Nice lady though. Nothing against her. Just saying there's a certain demographic that I'm talking about here. And I see her looking and then I hear, oh wow, that looks good. And I turn to her and I go, it is good. And she goes, yeah. And I go, "Mm mm-hmm. And she goes, oh, yeah. And then I uh, I like to mess with people. It's fun. So I jokingly stuck out my turkey leg and said, you want some? And she goes, <laughs> oh, uh, uh, nah, no, no thanks. No, I appreciate it. But no thanks. I go, okay, you're lost. And then she went, well, okay, yeah, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll have a little bit. And I said, hell, yeah. So I proceeded to... Uh, rip a piece off my turkey leg. You know, not from the part I was biting off of, other side. And uh, I went to go hand it to her. She goes, what are you doing? And I go, what's that? And she goes, to go grab a piece off herself with her hands. And I went, no, you're not doing that. And she went, well, I don't want your hands in my turkey leg. And I went, what? I don't want your hands in my turkey leg. Do you see the dilemma we're in now? And she goes, oh, yeah, 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 I got you. Okay, all right. All right, well, you know, thanks, but no thanks. Yeah, sorry, stranger that I don't know. I'm not going to let you dig your dirty fingernails into my $8 turkey leg. I mean, that's insane, right? I'm definitely not wrong here. And then I had a buddy ask me, he goes, um, well, now, given the opportunity here, if you had to choose, I understand that, you know, you would ideally just rip off a piece, but would you rather her take a bite out of your turkey leg, or rip a piece off with her finger. Those are your two options, only two options, to which I stated, uh, I think I would rather have her bite off of it than to take a dig her nails into it and take a piece off. There's no water. I mean, it's all porta potties out there. It's dusty as hell. You're completely filthy when, by the time you leave there. It's just built on a dirt patch. So dust is just blowing around. You're filthy, dirty. You know, you, you can't wash your hands. There's no, um, you know, Purell in the Renaissance, okay? So, no, they, I'm not going to have her dig her hands into there. She's wiping herself or whatever she's doing. Touch, touching any, everything in general is is disgusting. So, yeah, I, uh, that was an awkward interaction I had there. But uh, overall, anyways, uh, Renaissance Festival is super fun. Make sure you go out and check it out. Uh, this week on the show, we have a comedian formerly known as Ali. I believe that's what he's going by now. 
And uh, Zach Townsend, good old reliable occasional co-host of this show, is back. So they wrote, uh, they got this thing called Zebra Corner. I'm going to let Ali, you know, tell you about it so I don't get anything wrong. But they've had a few viral videos now. They have this uh, uh, guy named Mock that's a Boston dude that they create some spoof videos for. And uh, Zach helped write on one of these things. that went viral over the weekend. It's got over a million views on YouTube. I'm going to link it up on the uh, HMB Radio Facebook. So get over there. Facebook.com slash HM as in Michael B as in boy radio, all one word. And uh, you can check it out there. I'll link it in there. And uh, HMBRadio.com, of course. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to talk about going viral. And uh, Business Insider picked up the story, picked up the video, and wrote a little story on it. And uh, Zach will probably just insult me, as he tends to do, and I'll, you know, get jaw back at him. Uh, should be good. So before we get to that, though, I do want to say thank you to our sponsors, Tap House 61, Tap House, the number six and number one, dot com, 2061 Central Avenue here in St. Pete. Uh, make sure you check them out. They got trivia on Wednesday nights. That's always a big hit. Um, so get out there and uh, check out their Facebook to see what other events they got coming up. They got music. They got, you know, a bunch of stuff. So check it out. Facebook.com slash Tap House 6 and then 1. Okay? That's all you got to do. And uh, True V Salon and Spa. That's T-R-U-V as in Victory Y. Salon and Spa dot com. 8908 4 Street North right here in St. Petersburg, make an appointment, truevsalonandspa.com, and then you can uh, get uh, your hair did, and you look good, you feel good, and uh, you can get Botox if you want, take whatever wrinkles anywhere you want. I don't think there's a limitation of where they'll put it, so uh, don't take that from me, of course. You'll want to get permission and uh, ask the question yourself, because I'm just not comfortable asking that. But, uh, you know, if... uh, you got a little bit of wrinkles you're ashamed of, then uh, let the Botox lady take them out. Anywhere on your body. All right, let's talk to uh, Ali and Zach, shall we? This week on the homemade broadcast, HMB Radio on Radio St. Pete. I'm just like, it's Ali, you know, Muhammad Ali's not so scary, so Ali. Uh, speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you guys, and Zach included now, as part of the uh, Zebra Corner uh, is it? How would you describe it? I kind of describe it as a parody uh, collective, almost. But how would you, how would you sketch describe it? Sketch comedy collective, yes. I want to say it's less sketch right now, but it's something I want it more to be, sketch comedy. But right now it is commercial parody. Okay, I got you. So this character developed named Mock, and he is a Boston native, I take it. Yes. And that's where he's kind of the focus of these things. And then you kind of wrote jokes around this fella. Is that correct? Um, it actually all started, that character came the night of filming. We had no, it, like the script, it, there was no script that one. It was a Deal Dash commercial. It's like this show. Yeah. <laughs> Are you familiar with Deal Dash? I'm not. Okay, well it's a commercial, it was like the first real people commercial I've ever seen. And some dude in the mall is like, Are you interested in a phone? And the lady's like, Yeah, I really am. And I was like... What if one of us was in it? And it was just like, no, I'm not interested. <laughs> Leave me alone. And uh, so basically that night, we're like, okay, well, what's it going to be? Well, are you going to do like a voice or something? He's like, I'll just do a bo-. He only knew two, a- two accents. It was a Boston accent and Australian. So I was <laughs> like, we went with the, uh, with yeah, the Boston guys. accent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, mate. Well, yeah. <laughs> Have you thought about like branching that character out and having him become an Australian version? No, no, no. We're sticking it's with It's just the, Mock, the, yes. the Boston yeah, guy. Or like yeah. a, or you should do like a Boston guy doing an Australian accent. That could be pretty cool. Oh, yeah. There you go. Oh, just I don't, don't know if that would I don't even know if that would right work. Out. Yeah, I don't know if that would just blow his brain. Oh, mate. No, no, yeah. I don't, no. <laughs> Chevy. <laughs> so where did you uh, when did you guys start zebra corner it was uh i want to say 2015 to late 2015 2000 no it was two years ago let's say two years ago and where did you guys meet uh i've known him ever since high school high school party high school graduation party actually we uh we met and uh we smoked like the biggest freaking blunt you've ever <laughs> seen and then it, we were friends ever since that's that's how to do it yeah, that's really a good. bonding yeah, type of experience yeah, yeah. once you get like a certain level of 
like high or just messed up with <laughs> yeah, somebody, you're like, like we kind of like, have yeah, to be friends. We're now. family yeah. now, man. Or you just hate each other. Or yeah, exactly. Or you're two. like that guy. Yeah. yeah. Or you keep them on because you're like, I don't remember exactly what I told them, so I'm going to keep this guy on my side. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just so they don't start asking me where are the bodies, man. <laughs> uh, Zach, I don't even think I said you were here. Zach, yeah, what the heck? Here as well, Zach, you got hooked up with Zebra Corner recently. And yeah. there was a video that you uh, helped write some jokes for that went freaking viral. I saw it on the well, front page no, of Reddit. I not even like there. You guys have ones that are like way more viral than that. That's crazy. You know what? The term viral right now. It it's like be... it used to be like that's not even viral. Yeah. The viral now is like a billion views. Like oh, it's wow. like it's like that yeah, Gangnam that's... style. You know, it's yeah. that's viral. Yeah. Like. Two million now is that. nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. No. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a lot. I mean, a million is a lot yes. for, for an outfit that just got started. Yeah, it's a few quite years the change ago. from uh, doing stand up in a room full of eight people. And, you know, like. Tell me about yeah. it. I literally did that last night. Actually, I went up first, so there was like 40 people oh, there. But cool. I was like, and yeah. then it was And eight then people. it was like eight after me, after I walked, so uh, walked 32 them. of them. Cool. So did you? So you used to do comedy in St. Pete and Tampa yeah. uh-huh. and all that. And then no, you, it was mostly. I, you know what? I hated. I mean, I started actually at Tampa Improv, but I hated. Like, I never wanted to do that whole driving thing, like the road the comedy. Break. Oh, it yeah. stinks. No, yeah. I no, never. Dude, wanna I do don't want to do that either. I don't, <laughs> that's your going to be your life. No, it's you not, realize no, that. Right? I'm not because I don't. I'm just going to be a writer, dude. That's I, people always ask me like, why do you do stand up if you want to be a writer? It's like because that's why it's I'm a platform. Doing, yeah, it's a platform to get yeah. into writing. Yeah, I was lucky enough to skip that. Dude. Well, you did the right thing, which is you just started a thing and yeah. started making videos. You knew how to edit. You knew how to shoot a video. And I, th- How did you pick up that talent? Did you just start doing it? Well, I, I, my background is film. I went to film school. So, oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. And, um, and my work, actually, I uh, worked a lot with uh, – I was a, I worked for an engineer company. I was a videographer. And I uh, worked a lot with green screen. So we got to show off these machines and stuff. And uh, I was at the time we were watching that commercial. I was like, "Dude, we, I can put you in this commercial. It's so easy." And the inspiration That's was crazy. actually um, old hacky Billy Crystal at the Oscars. Yeah, I don't know if you ever remember I Billy remember, Crystal oh, yeah. used to host the Oscars back then. It was all da 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 da. Yep. You know, yeah, it's sure. like, but one cool thing he did was actually um, superimpose himself into like movies. And kind of like make it a comedic, you know, that was his bit or whatever. Yeah. And I was like, that always stuck with me. And I was like, oh, man, that would, that would always be cool, you know. And so we're not the – you have to be like the first to do something usually to get big. We weren't actually the first. But we – I think we good. did it. Yeah, we did it good, I think. <laughs> yeah. yeah, what was the first video you guys did? First video we did was called uh, The Radical Muslim. And it was like, oh uh, boy. <laughs> is that, yeah, it was a white guy and then me. And it was like, oh, is he radical or is he a radical, bro? <laughs> <laughs> it was scary, man. And know? that was uh, 2015? Yeah, I want to say 2015. Yes, late 2015. Did that video get the uh, type no, of No, it got like 30 was? views. <laughs> any, th- any rude comments? No, you know what? One comment said, this is so stupid. <laughs> Subscribed. <laughs> uh, I was like, yes. Nice. So that, that was works. like, okay, got to continue. And then the next one was the Deal Dash one. And then that got like 3,000. We're like, this is Freaking it, out. bro. Yeah. Quit my job. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, you don't get any money for that for YouTube. Yeah, I looked it up because I was, I was like, like, what's a million plays? And it's like 100 bucks or something. Yeah. It's really not yeah. that much. Yeah, anymore. it's like $1,000. Yeah. Yeah. And um, it's like ten dollars, <laughs> ten dollars, <laughs> ten dollars an article. Well, YouTube takes like forty percent. They or take like? fifty. No, they take forty five percent. That's insane. Yeah, that's wild. They take forty five percent. I get it that you know they're the hosts of the platform, but it's just they made like enough be, money. <laughs> I know How much money. Do you they're take? spreading the wealth. <laughs> there should be some reasonable fee for that. I would even say like even twenty five percent. Okay, fair yeah. enough. Uh-huh. But forty five that just seems unreasonable. And we actually, there's these things called multi-channel networks, uh, YouTube, basically, they're, they're leeches. And what they do is they just, uh, any popular videos, they'll email them and be like, hey, why don't you join our global network full of YouTubers? All right. And uh, we actually did that. 10% they take. Why? They handle all the merch, so we don't deal with t-shirts. They do all the logos, graphics, oh, stuff really? like that. Like, so I, I won't have to deal with it. Yeah. So take 10%, deal with the t-shirts, I don't care. But that's yeah, that could be worth it. But see, that seems reasonable. Ten percent seems ten percent, yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but, I mean, I guess potentially, if you're getting a billion views, that could be a lot of dough. Yeah. But uh, some of these guys, it hurt my feelings. I was looking up. I didn't know who that Logan Paul guy was. 
Oh, Do you know who God. he is? God. Yeah, I, I, I found out like you know when the incident happened or whatever. You know, it, yeah, I didn't really know who he was. Went to, and then I looked him yeah. up. Yeah, I was like, and it hurt my, it hurt me inside because I'm like, don't. why didn't I start doing this? You know, not not that I have the skill of Logan Paul for God's yeah. sakes, but uh, I, he's making. I think it was it said he's making a hundred thousand a Facebook post, thirty grand for an Instagram post, and he pulls in a whopping fifteen million dollars a year just from YouTube alone. To make you feel better, his views are children. Yeah, they're children. I don't care where they say. I, I, I <laughs> sometimes I'm like, could I? Would I switch places with it? I'm too self aware to do that. Do what he does. Like I'm too like sell. Like I'm like no way would I ever. You wouldn't sing no, so well. I, I don't think I could sell out like that hard. <laughs> it, where I would want to do like he's just he's he's the worst dude. He's, I wonder if these guys too got in so early that they made their money, but now it seems like they make it so difficult for creators to make any sort of profit. What's the what's the point of putting it on the platform if you're really not going to potentially make money doing it? Right. Yes. The, I mean, uh, what he actually makes a lot of money on is merch. Also, those kids. Hey, mom, can I get a sweater? You know. Also, sponsors is a big part. Um, they'll pay fifty thousand dollars just to do a Dollar Shave Club, right? Or something like that. Jeez. Not me though. No, no, no. no. Well, I mean, that, that, I'm sure that'll come at some point. Oh, uh, I mean, we have offers. We do sponsors and stuff. And um, I'd say the most we ever got was six, seven thousand. Still really good. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. But it's like the total sellout. Like, hey, it's not enough I'd, to quit your Dollar job, Shave yeah. Club. Gonna be like, oh, I love this <laughs> shave. Dollar, I love Dollar Shave Club. <laughs> They're pointing at their beard. Right <laughs> yeah, now, yeah, they were right. Yeah, radio. that's a joke there. But. uh <laughs> Yeah, man. So me undies. You should do me undies. Yeah. You ever see your Bill Burr's me undies? Oh, I gotta uh, get those. I, I like those. I actually own some. Do I you? bought them because of Bill Burr's ad. Wow. And they are every bit as advertised. Terrific. Wow. Hilarious. I wouldn't want to wear any other underwear. Are you sponsored by me undies? Or? I am not. Okay. This is a full fledged <laughs> what right. I believe That's in free. my heart. Uh, That's feeling right there. Boy. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Although I do want to try the Mac Weldon's now, I'm Commando. If that, I'm going Commando right now. If that lets you know where my That's sponsor. Is. I was wondering what that smell <laughs> was. Yeah. Uh, so Zebra Corner uh, started 2015. What was your first big video that it that everything started to pop? It was the third video we did, and that was the Chevy commercial. It's called. There's a Chevy emoji commercial where uh, the host is like, um, everyone's sitting in a chair, all these real people, and they're like, uh, give us an emoji to uh, uh, describe what you think <laughs> about this vehicle. And I was like, man, this is. Go! Yeah. <laughs> this is perfect. This is, easy to mock. <laughs> this is so easy. And and, and uh, so we just wrote a couple jokes for it. And the the poop emoji was always like, that's got to be the yeah. obvious freaking right, right, right. thing at the end. And it was so obvious, but people still liked it. Yeah. <laughs> but and that was the one that uh, it went on the front page of Reddit first, and then trending, and then it was like three million views, four million. It's so crazy, like, what pops and what doesn't. Because there are so many videos that go up every day of people that have, oh, yeah. you know, great ideas, I'm sure, that just get lost in the in Really? The abyss. It's all luck. It's yeah. all, I feel like it's a lot of luck. Um, I kind of... It's not all luck, but no, it is... No, it's not all luck. It yeah. is a big part of it. And I say that all the time. Never discount luck. And some people think that I'm, like, dogging talent or something like that, which is not the case at all. You have to have some no. sort of talent, certainly. If but, that person doesn't see you oh, at that right time. time, if that person on Reddit didn't see us at the right time to post that at that moment, that would have never happened. You know, yeah. that would have died. Someone else would have put a, a, a crappier title, and that it, it wouldn't have yeah, hit as right, well. Right, right, yeah. You know, uh, they say uh, I was reading um, a mock. Actually, he he reads all these or audible. He audibles all these uh, self help books, and he's reading this one or not reading, but listening to this one where he's talking about life is all a matter of circumstance. Luck, basically. Most famous people, it's all a matter of circumstance. They yeah. Just, uh, or and, uh, Jews. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> Having a Jew on your team definitely helps. I know from experience. And he was just so bummed out, man. Like, I can't read this book. And I was like, give me that book. This is my kind of book. That's a realist book right yeah. there, boy. So what was the reaction when you got all that, when that Chevy video popped on Reddit and all of a sudden you're getting Twitter followers and people are coming in, visiting the website? Like, what was your next step? Did you have a plan after people that? People were contacting us. And we're like, oh, my God, <laughs> this, is, this it. is it, baby. We this did is it. it. Part, two, part three. Quit my job. 30 views, 3,000, <laughs> yeah. 3 million. 
But like, uh, so what was the question again? Sorry. <laughs> like, what 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 was the next plan after you got oh, excited? Yeah. Like, they we were like, okay, what do we do? And yeah. Stuff and uh, a lot of people, these uh, MCNs, multi-channel networks, I told you about, they're contacting us. Come to our team. Come to our team. We're like, why even join one of join these the things? Team. And then it was like, people were like, oh, do T-shirts. Oh, do a Patreon. They'll give you free money. <laughs> we're like, there's all these different things about it. It became about, oh, okay, how do we monetize this? That was the next step, basically. Mm-hmm. How do we make money off of this? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the idea. And yeah, we still haven't stuff. figured it out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough. That's I mean, the it, age-old question. Yeah, it's always that. You, you have a giant... Uh, Head start, though, as far yes. as other people. Third video. Probably. That video was like, oh, we have an audience now. Let's not mess this up. Yeah, no, you got to be With, super yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now we got to be more careful. I almost think it's easier, though, because if you have a video like that is. that pops, because then it's like, well, people like you already, yeah. so they're going to be yeah, It's totally around. easier. People, I was reading the comments on the videos and all your guys' videos. Like, you guys have, like, a legit fan base. Oh, like, they, they suck our, like, thing so Dude, hard. They love... <laughs> That character so much. Yeah, they do. And it's so funny. It's like the voice of the common jerk, you yeah. know? <laughs> and that's like the best part because like just write it is like that makes writing for him so easy. Yeah. Because I'm a jerk. Yeah. You know, you're, you're, a, you're a jerk. Kyle. Yeah, Kyle. Yeah. <laughs> we're all jerks. And it, it really is, translates well yeah, to but that it doesn't character. doesn't sound as like charming coming from me. I would Trust never me. hang out with him. Bro. I would never <laughs> hang out with Mock in real life. I would never. I mean like that guy's like, I feel like he takes jerk. You know, we're subtle, you know, with our jerkness. Yeah. He's like total. Or we just, you know, in your stage. He's all out. Yeah. yeah. In front of a bar of people yeah. who didn't even know we we're going to be there. <laughs> yeah. So have you thought about bringing this maybe, you know, you're doing YouTube videos maybe to like a stage of some kind? No. Nah, some not kind of yet. Show? No. I mean, like, uh, you know, mock live at <laughs> yeah. the Apollo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Boo! <laughs> hey! Hey, what? <laughs> no, I mean, like, I've, I, I, I pictured it in my head, like, what it would be and stuff, but. It would just. I, I want just, it. It looks lame it. to me. In my head, it, it's all lame. Like, yeah. well, well, you know what I noticed with like one hundred twenty dollars a ticket. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But the thing is, like, it looks lame, like to people like us. But at the same time, if somebody was like, "Well, here's a check for this amount," you're like, "Oh, okay." okay. Actually, yeah. it's not that lame anymore. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. What I noticed too about you know, it seems like a lot of stand up now is going towards like Chappelle's new ones. I I like them. I thought they were good. Uh, but it sounded like he was doing a podcast. It sounded like he was talking to himself. Oh yeah, he's got his foot on the freaking speaker. Yeah, you but know? he can do that with his with his he, vape pen. Uh, like, yeah. hey baby, listen to what I'm saying. With his jewel, his it's, little... it's it's cool, man. It's like bringing him into your home. Hey, make you know? sure you talk right yeah. now. There's right. um, there but like there's people like uh, like Ger- you know Gerard Carmichael. You ever heard of him? Uh, yes, we were talking yes, about yeah. him last night, and he, like his first special, and he's like, it was his first special. He just kind of just did premises, and he just like didn't have any pun. It's, I'm not like I think he's funny, like and I think he's good, but I'm just like, come on, there were, like, where's like the Atel? Like there was a where's the Geraldo's like the punchline set? You know, it's people I, like they're just talking. I was very much like that when I did. And I was like very much pre- premise setup punchline. Give it. You know, yeah, like I won't go I on stage and try to work to you. When people say like, "Oh, I'm gonna go on stage and like work this out," like the only way I'll do that is if I have a joke and then I have like three tags in my head. I'm not <laughs> gonna be like, "Yes, hey, <laughs> what do you guys oh, think yeah. about flying cars?" Yeah, it's for like, sure. Do you look think around that, the room. Do you think that has anything to do with people trying to um, change the art form a little bit, do something newer, no. but rather than messing with a set? Like you know, there's a setup for jokes, so there's a pretty clear roadmap to what's funny and how to make stuff funny, but they're like, hmm, maybe I'll try to figure something else out, and that's, like, part of the art? Uh, you know what? Not for me, but I guess some people... <laughs> yeah, sure. You're trying yeah. to figure it out on stage. <laughs> I'm riffing, man. I'm riffing. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you know? Like, I, I mean, it, I, don't, I feel like that's improv right there. And uh, I don't know if you guys have ever been to an improv show, an amateur improv horrific. show. Horrific. Uh, but they're times, terrible. Yeah, they're really <laughs> okay? bad. Okay? They're terrible. Yeah, they're Not horrific. an improv I don't want to... Improv is like... Improv... That's improv. A stand-up is you've written those jokes down, and there's you're a, ready to tell that audience. There's an influx of uh, improv improvers, like improv comedy people who do stand-up now. And oh. uh, I, I, it's, it's just as exciting as I just made it sound <laughs> in my tone of my voice. I'm so frustrated with this uh, 
with the people, most of the people in the in the comedy scene now. It's it's hysterical. With I was uh, yeah, I was telling him like, every time. I feel like every time we talk, me and you talk, we just trash the, <laughs> <laughs> the state of scene and people. We just it's hate. It's really bad. I saw now this person's not around anymore, but it was uh, they moved up to the northwest uh, Portland area, and they posted a picture of a. Uh, somebody wrote a swastika in snow with a heart around it. Clearly satire, right? I mean, you're a comedian. You should be able to pick this stuff out. But her, the response was, can you believe this freaking Portland, man? I'll tell you what. It's like, you think Nazis are in Portland, Oregon? <laughs> Maybe the most progressive town in the world? That's what they want you to do. <laughs> yeah, I don't get it. They like want this to be true so bad. And there wasn't like any sort of like, oh, wow. I mean, clear, it's in a heart, for God's sakes. I, it, it's unreal, and there's so many of this. Hiding uh, in plain sight in Portland. Cam, Cam came back. Or you said you talked to him, and he was saying, like, you can't say certain things in yeah, Los Angeles. Yeah, he just came back from L.A., and he was, like, saying, like, man, don't take the freedom of speech. You have guys down here for granted, because I guess anything in L.A., just if somebody doesn't like it, you can just get X'd from even showing up there Can anymore. you imagine? The PC. Just you'll be exiled because you made a joke. About some, wow. some I think group he said some example. I think like I don't. I was like half listening because I really don't care what Cam has to say. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> one of the things he said something was like he called like he has a joke where he calls his girlfriend a biatch, and uh, I guess a lot of people didn't like that. Was that. too like, much. That was too much. Too much. Yeah, and oh it wasn't even God. like you dirty. It was like where do you think you are? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I had a. Uh, I saw one of the dudes, um, one of the local guys, do a joke about calling his dog. A bitch, and a lady got upset. She had pink dreadlocks, and she uh, walked out and got cursed him out. I think she was probably intoxicated. Maybe didn't hear that it was in fact an actual bitch. The oh, definition yeah. or something. Yeah. Hold um, on. <laughs> <laughs> but she stormed out of there, screamed and yelled, and I just went, "Thank God!" Because I used to do open mics, put like put on open mics and stuff. I'm yeah, anymore, um, I'm done. the one with the stage that's on. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. 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 You <laughs> got the ladder match going. Yeah. <laughs> that's actually where I met you the first time. You were yeah. recording Kyle. Yeah. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. How's that? Are you is it still going? Oh no. That's okay. Long, uh, it did. We did the two year celebration. I think it was two thousand. Two years. It was two years. Dude. that open mic going. Yeah, I that's know. Right? Those yeah, things yeah, don't that's last that's more than three no. months, baby. I, know. I felt. I felt uh, like that was an accomplishment. That is accomplishment. You must have actually like promoted and stuff. I did. Some a lot of people don't know how to do. So we had that, and then the next week, he goes, yeah, we're done. <laughs> so we celebrated the wow. two years. Of but they ended up, like, rebranding and, you know. Doing you know what the problem is? It's a joint now. It's a lot, oh, nice. really? Yeah, it's really oh, yeah. nice. Very fancy. feels like a problem with that is, like, a lot of these open mics, you know, you get the same comedians coming, and uh, they tell the same jokes over and <laughs> yeah. over again. Yes. And then the person comes and is like, ah. I saw that. <laughs> I saw that last week, man. I saw that the week before. <laughs> there was a lot of that was that was probably my main complaint, I would yeah. say, from from friends of mine that would stop by and I was like, Yeah, well, Dude, you know, it's an open How'd mic. I do? Yeah. <laughs> how'd I do, well, man? You did the same as last year when I saw you do the same five minutes. <laughs> See, I don't really mind it doesn't really bother me um too much because it's more of a hobby. For those people that are actual like trying to do something with it, they just like to go. Oh, yeah. They like to make people laugh, and they know like this has worked in the past. Or, I'm gonna do it again, or, dude. I'm just so over the hostess. <laughs> like, and there's just people that go to these things, and they do, that's their friend group. That's their only friend group. Does it's, it piss you off? And it's mm. so annoying. And like, I get it because like the bartenders would be like. These comics come here, and like, dude, there was like forty people, forty comics at the mic last night. Signed up. That's forty comics, five minutes of pee. That's what mic? Uh, I beer and rooster. And yeah, that one's popping. Forty off. comics. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dang. that's the one. Like all these improv people show up at, oh, and they all and okay. they and they run okay, till okay. they don't close till three. So they let these guys. They start at ten and they go till they literally go till three every week. Mm-hmm. Wow. And there's at the end, it's it's the most pitiful. Thing yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But don't you have to be that last guy? Have yeah. you ever been the last guy? Uh, actually, that's where you want to go. Because, really? Yeah, because they do a fifty dollars cash prize at the end. So. At the end, it's literally the last three to like seven comics. Whoever's you left, see. yeah, I go up, I go there, and I've been like the first comic because nobody ever signs up first. I'm like, I'll bomb, I'll tell these new jokes. I don't care. Like you guys aren't gonna yeah. affect me. So I've just signed up like first the last like four weeks in a row. Just leave immediately after. Can you imagine though having the hang out? Going up first, and then being like, like going up first, be like, I think I had a pretty good set. I'm gonna hang around for the next five like, hours, three days to see if I get fifty dollars later yeah. outside. So why did you stop doing comedy? 
Uh, there's a lot of reasons. Well, I mean, you're doing comedy, but not yeah, doing stand-up, stand-up comedy. Right? Um, there are several reasons. Um, I don't think I turn. I don't think I like the person I was becoming, because uh, once you uh, get into that like lifestyle, you, it's like a lot of bad stuff it's comes with dangerous. it. Dangerous, yeah. A lot of bad stuff comes with it. Always at a bar, alcoholic, smoking cigs, yeah. freaking. I actually, I took it very seriously. Like m- open mics, a show. I, I like I would puke before every time I went up. Really? Every time I would puke. I, I, I it was like for me it was like when I got on stage it was like this is my chance to prove I'm <laughs> funny. You know it's do or die. You know, uh, and then I'd see Someone's other comics the get up and be like, um, <laughs> see I got some stuff I'm working on. I guess like, what gonna... you got some stuff you're working on. <laughs> Yeah, so taking out like I guess I'll go to my nap. notebook. Yeah. <laughs> taking out yeah. like a wet napkin. Yeah. He has stuff written out. He's like, oh, yeah. let's see. Uh. <laughs> I took it, and uh, I mean, I need to. I, I'm working on that, like uh, taking stuff so seriously when I'm um, like doing it. But like, I took it too seriously. Like, even if I, it's like the first day of school, and it's like, go ahead and um, tell us your name, and tell us a little bit about yourself. I'd be like, ah, oh, man, I got a set list going in my head. <laughs> Uh, to make people laugh, you yeah. know? I, and I was never, like, class clown or anything like that. I was with my friends or whatever. I'd make them laugh. And then, like, if I was sitting in the class, it'd be, like, the dude sitting next to me. And I'd make the joke. And then the dude would take my joke and be like, yeah! yeah da, da, da. And then, <laughs> the whole cla- class would laugh. And I'd be like, that was my joke! <laughs> well, Shoot. But... but he did it so well! <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's all I that, wish that I had cadence. that timing. Yeah. Yeah, the timing it's down. the presentation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I had a, I had a friend. I, that was literally me. But like, that was me in, in like fifth grade, like fourth and fifth grade. I was super shy, and I got this one kid, Michael Blodgett, and like I thought we were friends, and I would tell him, and I would make him laugh, and then he would say it, and did, and then like I went into middle school, and I was like, I don't care if I get in trouble anymore. This, this is my <laughs> Michael, year. Michael Blodgett, you are so funny. <laughs> what? This I'm is his writer. Year, yeah. <laughs> I'm his ghost writer, man. He's only paying me ten dollars an article. What the heck? I, another reason was um, Steve Baird, who was a local comedian here forever, uh, twenty years, uh, doing hilarious comedy here, died, and uh, it like it kind of hurt because it was like this dude, one of the funniest dudes I've ever known, and no one outside the, the Bay Area comedy scene knows who he is. Yeah, I want to. That's scary. I, I know it sounds like. Narcissistic. I wanted a bigger stage. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was well, like, that makes sense. Yeah. I wanted, like, okay. I, I just want success. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Like, not like discrediting him, but like, I know exactly what you mean. And I don't have the pre- uh, the patience for stand up. Like, they say it's like 10,000 hours to become great yeah. at something. Yeah. I ain't doing 10,000. Yeah. Especially oh, on open f- mics. Yeah. Especially if I'm doing five minute uh, sets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know how long that yeah. is? <laughs> in, my, in my sets where I, I always did, like, topical jokes, like, hey, what's in the news today, you yeah. know? Like, and so my five-minute sets, I had to change, like, every yeah. <laughs> every time I went to open mic. And it was right. very hard for me mm-hmm. to build that 15 minutes. I hate that because I'm the same way. I love writing topical jokes. Yeah. And I hate that, like, I wish – like, I had a joke about the uh, NFL – when they were beating their wives and they were beating their kids, like everything was going out. Like it was in October, it's Breast Cancer <laughs> Awareness Month, and I was like, "Yeah, like the NFL, everything's pink in the NFL. Like the helmets, the gloves, the cleats, except for the wives and kids. They're still black and blue." <laughs> and I hate that I can't do that yeah, joke anymore. Yeah, it's because I'll be like, now it's like three season, years later. Yeah. I'm like, "Hey guys, remember a couple years back? When yeah, yeah, a couple yeah. players got in trouble. Well, remember? you got 31 days in October, man. Yeah, yeah but I gotta just hope that like some NFL players yeah. slip up. For me, it's like, hey guys, remember Casey Anthony? You know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so what's the plan with Zebra Corner? Ideally, like what's in the what's in the future? What are you what are you trying to do? Well, I've always wanted to be like you know pretentious director, you know, like make that movie boy. You know, I was always Tommy Wiseau. As a kid, I, as a kid <laughs> I, yeah, as a kid. Oh hi, Mark. Oh hi, Mark. That's what you should do. Yeah. Oh hi, Mark yeah. on the rooftop. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Speak English. <laughs> what the heck do you say? Is this guy Australian? <laughs> Uh, this guy a vampire? What the? <laughs> I mean, I've uh, I've always made like uh, videos when I was a, since I was a little kid. Like when I was a little kid, I used to make I used to go in the backyard and make like um, fake buildings and put fireworks in them and blow them up with my dad's huge VHS recorder. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and like I don't know, you're scary like, when you said your dad is like yeah, your, your yeah. ethnicity. Yeah, like, like a bazooka. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so, like, in high school, I was in the TV production, and I, you know, I got trouble for making videos there, you know, that were too risque, and in college, I made videos that, like, got awards and stuff, so I was like, okay, there's something there, 
But I like comedy, and I always wanted to, you know, I love, like, my favorite movies are, like, Airplane and Zucker and Abraham's movies, Hot Shots. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, Mel Brooks, these silly movies. Man. Caddyshack. Love, Caddyshack, yeah. Caddyshack. I, I just lo- rewatched you know, that the other day. Yeah, so, so good. <laughs> Dangerfield is the, I, actually, I got. I have to ask you, because you're into, like, movies, and, well, you can even answer this. Who cares about you? Thanks. Though. But uh, this kid I got into an argument with, he's my old roommate, and he said, his argument is there's, um, what, what I took from it, he said, I think there's three people in this world. People who watch Caddyshack and think Rodney Dangerfield's the funniest person in that movie, Bill Murray's the funniest person in that movie, or Chevy Chase is the funniest person in that movie. Oh, you know what, Dan? That's hard, dude. I think, I, I I, think I mean, it's an easy I'm answer. Actually, for it's me, Dangerfield. Yeah, for me, I was going to say a Dangerfield, then Chevy, then Bill Murray for me. Yeah. I love Chevy's asshole attitude in that. Yeah. You know, we got into a huge uh, fight. Are you on drugs? <laughs> you know? <laughs> He's like, no, Chevy Chase is the funniest person. In this. We're screaming at each other in the living room. Wow. Like, so it no wasn't way. even Bill Murray. I thought he was going to. No, I yeah. He was a Bill we, Murray we, guy. No, okay. I. I don't well, this character was kind of doofy. I yeah. mean, they're they're all separate characters. Dangerfield was the uh, verbose, old, rich, just kind of like white yeah. trash. But he's doing like jokes too, where you kind of have to think about it, yeah. which I love. Well, he's it like, was Donald Why Trump. Trump pretty much. come with a bowl of soup. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? So he was he was Donald Trump in that movie. That's pretty much what he was. And then you know, hey, Bill, yeah, and, and part two. Let's not forget about part two, guys. <laughs> oh, please, let's forget about part two. Sweet Jesus. That was brutal. So, anyways, before we go, what, what what's next for Zebra Corner? Uh, well, uh, we uh, right now we're just basically using it as a platform for our comedy. We want to, ex- you know, right now we're kind of stuck with that mock character. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> right. That's yeah. like well, a, it's your bread and butter. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. It but is. you want to branch out, maybe yeah, get other characters, gonna, you know, and... more sketch, more, you know, more bring more comedians in from the Tampa. Tampa comedy scene, so nope. I know y'all dicks getting hard nope. right now. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, um, but uh, I kind of like uh, eventually want to get into. Yeah, you know, it's weird because we've had offers, uh, like um, the Velocity Network contact us. They want Mock to be the new uh, new host of Car Soup. <laughs> no way. Car Soup. Car Soup. It's like Talk Soup. Like talk soup yeah, with yeah, yeah. Car, okay. Car Soup. Uh huh. We had a deep conversation. About that, at first he's like, "Yeah, this is it. <laughs> we did it." I'm like, "This is you want to do that's this it? every yeah. day? Like every day you're gonna have to look at car stuff and come up with car jokes. Yeah, and that's that's gonna be your life. We have something building here. Yeah, we can we can do whatever we want under Zebra Corner. Yeah, mm-hmm. we can build this brand up. You know, it's stupid." That's a good point. Stupid that's comedy thing. with this. Well, that's the workaholics YouTube. guy. The workaholics guys yeah, did yeah. the same thing. They, did, they started on YouTube. So did uh, Derek Comedy, Danny Donald Glover. Yeah, he started mm-hmm. with uh, with uh, Derek Comedy. Bo Burnham. Bo, Bo Burnham's Burnham. an exception. Like, he like I'm workaholics guys. Like their story because I like I'm into you know this just as much as that's like what I want to do like behind the scenes writing. I don't want to be in front of the microphone. I want to do stand up on the back burner. You know but what? Right. That's good of you because a lot of comedians want to be the center of attention. That's so a annoying. lot of times. I mean, we're all narcissists. We all want to be. We all want to be the one. You know, yeah. we all want to be. But sometimes it's better to be like helping each other and create something more. Yeah. You know? Well, if you get if you get the uh, recipe right. If you get the same, the, a certain mix of people together, yes. magic can happen. Yeah, so, absolutely. I mean, I, I, I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys do because it's going to be uh, exciting to yeah. watch. It's good to see somebody from the Tampa Bay area kind of not only do something that's getting attention, but having the possibility to do it on your own and, uh, sure. you know, kind of the sky's the limit. Yeah. So. Thanks for coming on, man. I appreciate it. Where can people oh. find you on uh, um, online? YouTube.com slash Zebra Corner. Uh, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, I'm actually mock. <laughs> <laughs> at I'm underscore mock, M-A-H-K. Or you can find me at, at comedian underscore Ali. So, uh, but I'm both. So. <laughs> there you go. Psych. So either way. Zach, where can people get you? Uh, at Smack Townsend or at SBC College. I was crying <laughs> in the corner. 27 year old <laughs> in intermediate math. Uh, <laughs> Dude, I did the same thing. <laughs> me too. Me yeah. too. All right. Thanks, Ali. All right. See you. All right. There you go. Ali from Zebra Corner. Check it out. Some funny stuff on there. And many good things upcoming, I'm sure, for that guy. Those guys. Mock. Ali, Zach. Uh, thanks for listening to Homemade Broadcast this week. HMB Radio on Radio St. Pete. Make sure you uh, subscribe to the podcast. It's super easy. Just go to iTunes, Stitcher, wherever you get your podcasts. 
Search HMB Radio, all one word, Hotel Mike Bravo Radio, Tampa Bay, and it'll pop right up for you there on iTunes, Stitcher, wherever the heck you're uh, subscribing. Check out HMBRadio.com. Leave a voicemail or text for the show, 813-693-2124. Make sure you stay tuned uh, on Radio St. Pete if you're listening there. Uh, Frank Rivera's Jazz Show is coming up next. Indie Circuit after that, if it's a Sunday evening. And tune in to uh, The Bone, 102.5 The Bone here locally in Tampa Bay or TheBoneOnline.com for Stay Woke, midnight to 1 a.m. Uh, it's myself and I uh, co-host for Anna Hummel, and uh, it's a good time. We have, we have fun over there. Uh, this is The Homemade Broadcast. This is HMB Radio on RadioStPete.com. My name is Will Kuntz. I hope you have a terrific week, uh, a nice weekend, a remainder. And uh, stay positive. Stay strong. I love you. And I want you to succeed. Okay. On that note, goodbye. Get bent. See ya.